every time I do a video on a video editor, I always blather on for way too long about plain text project files, but I don't think I've actually properly explained why that's the case and why I care so much about them. So today, that's what we're going to try to do and explain why the benefits massively outweigh the drawbacks because they're not perfect. There are some serious problems that do come along with them, but I think from a user perspective, having the freedom of a plain text file is a massive thing to get. Now, I will be focusing on just general user applications, so video editors, image editors, audio editors, things like this. There are certain use cases, like say with video games, where it does make way more sense to go and use some sort of proprietary binary format, but for most applications, I think plain text is a much better solution. There is a countless number of formats you may see for a plain text save file, but from what I've seen with video editors in particular, the most common things are XML and JSON, which sort of make perfect sense. Those are very popular formats, and when someone's not using one of those formats, it's very likely they've made something up themselves. There are other formats like, say, Toml, but I see those being used far less often. One of the inherent problems you do get with plain text files is they're always going to have a bunch of wasted space, which does lead to the files being much larger than they otherwise would need to be. So this right here is an XML file. If you've never seen XML before, it's basically HTML with different tags. Someone's going to complain in the comment section, but for the sake of this discussion, think of it like HTML. As we can see, there are a bunch of spaces here where there's just nothing else on the line besides just a single tag and then some tab characters. You can actually go and minify XML and when you actually send it over a network, you would actually put all of this onto a single line. But in this case, that hasn't actually been done. The same holds true for JSON and really any other format designed around the web. Basically, a computer has a much lighter way to write it compared to the way that you would naturally write it by hand. But even so, even in its absolute lightest form, there are certain applications like, let's say, a open world AAA game where having a XML save file would lead to much, much higher load times and much, much larger save files. But when it comes to something like a video editor, it doesn't really matter if you're wasting, I don't know, an extra 10 kilobytes you have probably a terabyte of storage on your system. Even if you don't, like let's say you have, at the bare minimum, you probably have at least a 128 gig SSD. Do you really care about wasting an extra 30 or so kilobytes? In my case, not really. And when that's the file sizes we're working with, the load time differences are going to be basically imperceptible. Now by saving something as a plain text file like we have right here, I can see exactly what has been saved to my system. So if I want to go and say, you know, modify one of my markers, instead of having to do that inside of the application, I can actually go and do that inside of the file itself. And then the application will just happily read that data as if nothing has really changed. Whereas if I have a binary format, while I could technically go and modify it by hand, the problem you're going to have is if you don't have it lined up exactly with the format it was saved in, it's going to be completely garbled data and you're probably going to completely corrupt the file. So unless you know exactly how the data is being saved by the application, I wouldn't even bother trying that because you're just going to break something. So sure, while you can go and do stuff by hand, I can't really see you doing that that often, but something you might do really often is let's say you have all of these markers here and you know they're always going to be in the exact same format. What you could go and do is go and make a script that goes and extracts all of those out automatically for you. User scripting is the biggest reason why I support plain text files, whether that be a read operation like extracting out the markers or a write operation like generating a template file and automatically loading in all of my video files before I even open up the editor. While this all could be done with a serialized binary file, unless you know exactly what serialization library is being used and exactly what the objects need to be saved are called, it doesn't really matter if you can do it it's not really going to work for the application. But even if there is literally zero documentation on how the save file actually works for an application, which does seem to be the case for Olive and Caden Live, you can actually see how the save file is structured and then learn by example. And unless they're using a custom format, it's very likely the language you're using is already going to have some parsing library that exists for that format. So whether that be XML, JSON, Toml, I know in Python, 
Jason and XML are both in the standard libraries. I'm not sure about Tomal or things like that, but it probably is there knowing Python. This just makes it very easy to work with these formats. And if it is a custom format, you could always just go and write your own parser for it. And being a custom format, I would hope it's not super complex. So this gives you the ability to do things which either aren't possible in the application because maybe there's just no UI elements for it or are completely impractical in the application because maybe this specific action you're trying to do was never thought of by the developers. But ultimately, the developer has the final say in the format being used, but I do think there are actually really compelling reasons why a developer should actually go with a plain text file. Now, if you are looking for a performance benefit when saving and loading up files, you may want to go with a binary solution. If you're doing that, you're very likely going with some existing serialization library. Doesn't really matter what language you're using. Basically, every language under the sun has one built into it. And if it doesn't have a built-in library, I can guarantee there will be some third-party library you can go and use. The problem with doing serialization, though, is if you make a mistake and you're not really sure why the file isn't saving correctly, you can't exactly go and examine the file to look at the output because it's just going to be garbled nonsense. You have to actually work your way through the code to actually work out where the problem is. Whereas if you're doing this with a plain text file and there's some sort of problem with the output, you can actually examine the output and see, okay, maybe if I'm using XML, Maybe I don't have the markers saved in the correct block. They're actually supposed to be in the clip block or the sequence block. And that actually does give you a second place you can use to go and debug the application rather than trying to look at code that you thought was right anyway. As with earlier, if you've worked with the serialization library for a very, very long time, maybe you'll be able to understand the output. But most people will not really be like this. And if there's a bug with the output, they're basically going to be stuck looking at the code they thought was correct. Now you certainly could go and write your own serialization library and have a much better understanding of how it actually works. But unless you have a good understanding of how these already function, your solution is going to be worse than every single other solution out there. That's not to say that you in particular are a bad developer, but most of these libraries have existed for a long time and have multiple people working on them. Something you throw together in a weekend isn't going to be anywhere near as optimized as the existing solutions. Whereas if you want to have a custom plain text format, making a library for that is far, far simpler. But for most situations, you really don't need to do so. If you want something very lightweight, you could always just go and use something like comma separated values. If you need commas in your output, you could try like tab separated values. And if you need tabs and commas, you could just swap out the separated character for literally any other character that you're not going to be using. And most CSV libraries let you actually go and swap that character out anyway. Now, while a corrupted binary file a lot of the time will be completely beyond repair, in a lot of cases, you actually can recover data very easily from a plain text file. Now, because the file is corrupted, obviously some of the data is going to be missing, but you could still make the application open up the potentially corrupted file and let the user actually go and recover what is actually there so that they don't lose the entire project. Ultimately, you don't want a corrupted save file and should have some backups, but it's still better than nothing when you need the file. I've mentioned it a few times in this video, but I've got this script that extracts out project file markers from things like Caden Live and Olive, and then converts them into YouTube chapter markers so that, you know, below my video, as you see on the timeline, it says like, here's the introduction, here's the outro, here's all of the other things in between. I could go and write those by hand, but I'm very lazy, and if I have to do it by hand, I'm not going to do it. So let's go into say, I don't know, this one right here, and let's go and open up my terminal. And the script right now is just called Caden Chapters because I initially just had it work from Caden Live and I haven't gone to actually update the name. So the file is browser.ove. This is basically what you'll see in the description of my video where I say timestamps and that's what actually generates all of those markers. And that's what actually generates all of those chapter markers. While I could be completely fine working without this and most of the time I've been on YouTube, I wasn't actually using this script. Now that I actually have this functionality, going to any video editor where I don't have a plain text file where I can actually adapt this script to work for a new application seems like a massive downgrade to me. 
And there's so many other little things that could be automated. Like let's say I want to automatically add in my outro at the end of my timeline or I want to go and add in that little overlay I have at the start of the video where it says, hey, if you like the video, you should subscribe, things like that. All of that stuff is always in the exact same place, which makes it very, very easy to automate. I just haven't actually got around to do so yet, but having the ability to see how the file is structured makes it very easy to go and add that if I want to. Maybe I'm just being pedantic and no one besides me actually cares about this, but honestly, I think that if you care about doing things with scripting, whether that be, you know, automatically renaming files or anything like that, I think that adding more places you can automate your system is always going to be a good thing. Before I go, I'd like to say that if you're not subscribed to the channel, currently 66.1% of you are in the exact same club. So if you are enjoying the content, do go and click the subscribe button down below because that would be very useful. If you're on other platforms as well like Odyssey or BitChute, it'll definitely help out there as well. So I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, Mont uh, David Montezar, Will, Brennan, Chico Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, Peter D, Stephen, Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, there are links down below to my Patreon, subscribe star, leave pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere, and then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch my content on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.